Um, hi guys, uh, welcome to Inspire Chemistry. Uh, it's been a long time and today we're bringing you a video uh, from a person who is enrolled as a, a fel fellow of Quad Fellowship and uh, her name is uh, Shreya Sharma. She's currently doing her master's in Carnegie Mellon University um, and uh, she would be happy to share her experience and give us insights about the Quad Fellowship. So thank you Shreya for coming us and uh, joining us today to help students. So Yeah, thanks Aditya for inviting me. Uh, so let's start with the first question. Can you tell us what Quad Fellowship actually is? Uh, yeah, sure. So Quad Fellowship is basically an initiative by the four Quad nations, which are India, US, Japan, and Australia. And they announced this fellowship in 2021. So it's a very new fellowship. Hai. And I am fortunately the part of the inaugural cohort uh, that that, start, that happened last year. And uh, the cohort, like this fellowship was meant for 2023, 24. And now they've come up with their next year's applications for the academic year of 24, 25, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they basically sponsor students uh, who want to pursue master's and doctoral study in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, basically STEM fields in the United States. So they choose students from these four coordinations to study in the United States. Uh, good thing is that this year they've extended their pool of like from where they'll accept applications to 10 other Asian countries, okay. which are like Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam. Yep. Uh, originally, they had they selected like 100 students, 25 from each of the four quad countries. This year, they haven't come up with like exact numbers, ke, kitne se uh, but it should be around that. Um, okay. And like basically the requirement for applicants would be like they need to be residents of either these four core countries or those 10 ASEAN countries. And they need to have a bachelor's or equivalent degree in STEM by August 2024. Mm -hmm. So they should have a degree by then. And they should be enrolled in a master's or doctoral program, basically a graduate level program in STEM in United States for the academic year of 24-25, which would be their fellowship year. Okay. So uh, I have two questions. So mm -hmm. ki, jo science field, hai, does it include? Science could be anything, biology, engineering, mm -hmm. chemistry, physics, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it is pretty broad. And I think except the medical field, like medicine and nursing, most of the uh, STEM fields, uh, so they have this extensive list of astronomy, biology, chemistry, cognitive science, computer science, data science, engineering, environmental science, geology, mathematics, material science, meteorology. So, so quite a broad field. Neuroscience, so, oceanography, yeah. All of these, public health. So, uh, so yeah. I, I also assume then... Um, the bachelor's needs to be four years, is it? Or do you know? I don't think there is any specific requirement on that. They say bachelor's degree or equivalent. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. should be could be three years. Uh, but yeah, don't restrict yourself based on, okay, maybe my bachelor's is not enough. That, that shouldn't be a criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's move out. Can you tell us about more benefits about uh, of this scholarship uh, yeah, that you sure. actually get? So uh, this scholarship, this fellowship basically comes with like a one-time award money of 40,000 US dollars that could be used towards your academic expenses, tuition fee, living expenses. And a good thing about this is that it's a supplementary uh, form of grant. So a lot of other scholarships like road, uh, road scholarship and a lot of other scholarships, uh, they substitute your current funding. Like if you're a PhD student, let's yep. say, you get a fellowship that replaces your current stipend of funding um, and that becomes your primary source. Uh, but this fellowship is like a supplementary kind of. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're already getting from, from your university, you can use this additional money to fund your research, your travel and all of that. And for master's students, of course, they could use it towards the tuition and living expenses. So that's a good flexibility I found really helpful. Uh, another thing uh, is that since it's a fellowship, it's not just a scholarship, you get the opportunity to like virtually uh, like virtually interact with other fellows. There are like virtual programming sessions, which I found particularly really helpful because you get to interact with like big people, STEM ke bade bade logo se, yeah. basically you get to interact uh, from STEM like professors, also from government bodies, like policy makers in the field of science, because it's of course, it's like sponsored by the government in a way. Yeah. So they want people like, young researchers like us to know how research gets implemented in the real world through policies and regulations. So like Wo flavor is very, uh, very unique to Quad Fellowship, I guess, where policy and research comes together. Um, yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, in general, my experience has been really nice. Uh, like the benefits have been uh, really helpful towards my education. Okay, so I want to tell you that, as you know, that for the U.S. Ke liye, at least PhD and both size scholarships. Nahi hai. There's uh, Fulbright and there are only few limited and they are only limited to certain colleges in certain fields. So this is probably would be the best scholarships and I think it will gain a lot of attention in the coming years. So uh, do focus on this. Uh, apart from this, I uh, wanted to ask you, do you also, can you apply for um, ticket, like a refund for ticket flights and et cetera? Is it extra or is it included still in the... Uh, so I am not very sure about this because 
these little details of the fellowship i guess keep changing year by year uh, so i cannot comment on that uh, okay. yeah, what fine. i could say is that it's a one time award of $40000 you could use it towards your flight tickets or whatever so mm -hmm. um uh, then can you tell us uh, how did you get to uh, know about this scholarship uh, first and are there any resources that people could generally follow for to know more about scholarship not just this one but uh, new ones or other ones yeah sure so of course this was happening for the first time so it wasn't like i knew any alums of the scholarship or fellowship or uh, anything like that uh, but fortunately it was circulated in my undergrad email network uh, so i got to know about this from iit delhi i'm really grateful for that that i got to know about it um, and i think in general universities keep sharing such opportunities with their students so if you're a bachelor student or already studying you should definitely keep an eye on such opportunities and if you're not or like even if you're a student i think it's a good idea to just be aware on twitter and linkedin try to follow like as you said uh, government of india science pages they share a lot of such details um, and usually these scholarships uh, and fellowships like publicize a lot on these platforms so i think it's a good idea to keep an eye on those updates okay um now so since you're a fellow yourself we'll ask you ki how difficult and easy it is to get in and uh, can you comment about the academic records and role of internships or uh, do you need uh, TOEFL or GRE exams for this or also do you need to write some research proposal or SOP something like this definitely uh, so i'll answer there are like multiple questions yes, in this yes, so sure. i'll start with the first one which is like what are the requirements for the application so the the requirements are very much similar to any university grad applications so you need your official transcript from your undergrad university an sop uh, which would be very much similar to what you submit to a graduate program but slightly focused on what would be your plan and how your research would impact the society and like for a social good um then there are like two essays also aligned to this how your research contributes to the society and how you justify it um and then there is a resume you can submit up to two pages because they they encourage research fellows so yeah mm -hmm. and then there would be three lors they emphasize that you get at least two lors from people from academia mm -hmm. and finally there is tofel score for english proficiency so those are the so, basic requirements so uh, one question can you give ilts also or is it just tofel that they ask or the official website says says just tofel so, so uh, I so think it would be a good idea to email and ask if someone wants to get a clarification on uh, that. Also, I would like to tell others that uh, mostly, also in Europe, uh, TOEFL is a uh, more acceptable. Like in Europe, people do ILTS, but uh, TOEFL works everywhere in in the world: U.S., Canada, Australia. So if you have if you have a confusion, go for TOEFL. Um, yeah, yes. definitely. I would recommend uh, too. Yes. Uh, so coming back to the academic records. Yeah. So I think in the application, the process is quite rigorous because. you there are like three stages you submit your applications there's an initial review process they go through all the applications i think they shortlist um few candidates for the first round of interviews uh, which is a technical round so basically in your application you write a lot about your research what you've done so far what what's your plan ahead and they basically map you to people from your field basically professors and people from academia and you go through a technical interview round where you're asked questions about your research basically resume stuff and what's your plan and basically they are just testing that you do know about your field right mm -hmm. um and then after this there is this final round which is like a panel interview okay. uh, where there are people from uh, industry academia as well as government i would say mm -hmm. uh, so basically they want to see that you fit in their mission of uh, like bringing research and policy together and like foster during international collaborations kind of things so i think that would when you reach that point it's a good idea to like absorb the mission of quad fellowship for such rounds of interviews like what do they want and then they see that uh, if you're a good fit and adding to that in your application it would be a good idea to not just focus on your research but try to show like a more holistic profile so if you could tell uh, if you like let's say you did an mun during your school days mm -hmm. where you got to uh work or draft a policy to resolve some con conflict let's say middle east or somewhere it would be a good idea to like just mention that i was part of this model united nations where i worked with my teammates so i do have that sense of global citizenship thing right or if you did an internship somewhere for a university and you worked in a multicultural multinational team where you had teammates from different countries so you can say i collaborated well with them and um, i think those kinds of things uh, would really make an impact okay and uh, can you guide us through uh, the process and timelines usually when so when should somebody start and how much time does it take or how many steps or processes there are sure sure so i think the applications have already started you should check wordfellowship.org i think that's the official uh, we'll, we'll put you, uh, we'll put the link in the description also just to uh, uh, for you all people if you want to know how to write sop lors um, and uh, 
also resumes. We'll, uh, we've made videos on this and you can find them in the description box. Ah, sorry, Shreya, please. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's actually great. Like you're making videos on such resourceful things. That's like amazing. Yeah, congrats to you. Um, yeah, so coming back to the timeline, mm -hmm. uh, so applications are already open. They're accepting applications. Deadline is April 1st. Uh, after that, they want to wrap up all the process by July. So they'll uh, announce the fellowship winners in July. And then from August or late July, people usually start the graduate program. So it would align well with that. Mm -hmm. So Also, another important point I want to add is that uh, I think you'll be able to accept the fellowship only when you have an admit from a graduate program uh, okay. when, when you're finally selected because you need to be a student in a U.S. university pursuing a graduate degree uh -huh. in the year 2024 to 25. Okay, so uh, just one technical question. So people in their last year of bachelor's, right? So our semester, it's like last two, two semesters in a year. So can the person in the last year apply it or do they have to finish first and then get a uh, somewhere in U U.S. university and then they can apply for this scholarship? Is no, absolutely. Right? People in their last semester of bachelor's are the ideal candidates for this mm -hmm. fellowship because, uh, and especially the people who want to pursue their graduate studies right after their bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So if you're, so ideally people apply for these programs, graduate programs in December, January, get their results by like April or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, it aligns well with that. So once you've applied to your graduate programs, master's, PhDs, whatever, and you're still in your bachelor's, apply for this fellowship, get the results of your uh, graduate program, then inform the fellowship people as well while you're in the application process, and then like uh, everything would align well. Another important thing, if you are currently a master's student and have another year to go, or you're a PhD student and have like n number of years to go, yeah. you can still apply for this <laughs> fellowship. Ah, this is this is I think this is the first time I think some scholarship works like this or fellowship works like yeah, this. yeah, it's really flexible and that's great about it. Okay, and I think uh, we are kind of uh, done, uh, but. Uh, uh, we have just a few requests. So uh, would you like to share some insider tips? How can somebody prepare for this? Like, uh, is there some way to build your profile, your networks or, um, yeah. And if somebody wants to connect to you to know more about how can this be done um, and get some more suggestion, can they reach you somehow? Absolutely. So I think I emphasized it multiple times that the fellowship actually looks for people who have interests, who work who work on research projects in the STEM field and have strong motivation or interests to apply those research uh, objectives or research basically into social good. So if you could emphasize on that in your uh, essays, SOPs, if you could give concrete proofs of what you've done so far that supports that and like give a high level plan of what you would do during a graduate program to like work in that direction, that would be really helpful. Another thing would be like, if you could show how you're, you are like, you have a holistic profile, like how you are, you have that team leader spirit, how you can lead teams, how you can interact well with people mm -hmm. from different backgrounds. Uh, basically, uh, like, what, how would, uh, like, how would you be a good representative of your country? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it comes mm -hmm. down to a lot of things like knowing technical details to good management to good, being a good speaker, a lot of soft skills. Yeah, exactly. So a, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think all of these things are uh, being evaluated during your interview rounds as well. So I think not because a lot of people focus a lot on the research aspect, they're like, we'll write almost a research proposal in the SOP and like, it would be like a bang on thing. Mm -hmm. But I think they're looking for something beyond that. So people should keep that in mind and like give some, uh, a lot, some space for that in their profile as well. Um, and other than that, yeah, um, I can share my LinkedIn and you can add that in your description and I'd be happy to help people and answer questions over there. Okay, so uh, thank you, Shreya. I think we covered a lot of topics. And just for our viewers, um, we are always, uh, if you have questions to us, to Shreya, uh, you can always comment to us and uh, comment in the box. Uh, we'll try to answer you. Uh, for more information on how to apply abroad, not just scholarships in US, but also in Australia or Europe, uh, you can follow us. And um, thank you, Shreya, again, for sharing your valuable insights with us. Thank and you for inviting me. It was amazing talking to you. Yeah. Thank you, Shreya. Good luck, everyone.